you've ever watched any of our videos, you probably have looked over my shoulder and seen a, an odd ghostly looking cover to a book. Well, the book is Jocko Willink, Discipline Equals Freedom. That's not coming in real clear, is it? Discipline Equals Freedom. This is one of his books that he wrote. It's not the Extreme Ownership. It's um, basically a field manual, not so different than what he worked with in the Navy SEALs. Um, section I'm reading today, I wanted to read out loud to you because I, I, I'll talk to you about it when I finish. Self-sabotage. I hear this term getting thrown around a lot, self-sabotage. The idea is that you get scared to win so that you do things that make you fail. Every time he or she gets close to winning, they self-sabotage and they come up short. No. This is garbage. You aren't scared to win. You're scared to work. Guess what? Winning takes work. It takes effort. It takes grind. Failure to do the work isn't self-sabotage. It's just plain, old-fashioned lazy. Don't be lazy. Is that true? I don't know. You know, do we self-sabotage? 100%. We tell ourselves what we can and can't do based off of nothing more than a predetermined mindset. Um, I know I've done this. Um, I actually know, I know some celebrities that have done this. Um, if you know of a comedian named Artie Lang, Artie Lang was a stand-up comedian, went on to be on Mad TV, and then did a really, really, really good job for a couple of years on um, Howard Stern. He was Howard Stern's right-hand guy. And um, he was a heroin addict, an alcoholic, all the things, right? From New Jersey, blue-collar, hard-working guy, came up from the streets. Dad was blue-collar. Dad died at an early age. Artie kind of had this Jim Belushi thing where he was outrageous, but he was self-destructive. Um, and the closer, and he admits this in his books and in his, in his talking, he carried around some kind of thing that told him that he didn't deserve what he was getting because he was getting notoriety. He had great movies. He was doing with, with uh, uh, the guy who played Tommy Boy, um, you know, whatever his name was. In Spade, he was making great movies. Norm MacDonald was a good friend of his, his mentor. But the closer he got to that next level, he did more heroin or coke or whatever it is he was doing, and he self-sabotaged. Well, you know, he self-sabotaged his whole career. I don't know. I don't know if this applies to that. I don't know if he was afraid to do the work. I think he was afraid of what happens when he gets there. What will people think? Maybe what will the guys back from the neighborhood think? I don't know, but I do know that this, this theory of people aren't scared to win. I think everybody wants to win. Um, I don't think we sabotage always, in like the extreme case I just talked about with Artie. I think we just, I, th I think there may be something here to the, or afraid of the work, especially entrepreneurs, especially those minded looking for freedom of time. Everything that we need to do that's great is going to take a lot more sacrifice than we even perceive uh, and then when we're met with those unknowns those un unexpected hurdles it feels 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 tough um, and I think some people are just saying ask themselves and they have these conversations because they don't remember why they're doing whatever it is they're doing they say is this worth what I'm having to put in my nights my weekends my business trips flying across the country to meet someone or go to an event or do something that I don't even know what it's going to become, but it looks like it's an opportunity. That's work. Um, staying away from all the little shiny objects to do the things you have to do and not do the things you just want to do. Stay off social media. Uh, uh, delegate to other people. Accept that other people that you delegate to in your company, you tell yourself they'll never do it as good as you. First off, that's a lie. Second off, in the very beginning, you might be right, but what you get from letting that go will get you there. Um, I do think that a lot of people are lazy. 
I think that hard work, everybody's capable of a little bit, but we tell ourselves that there's a certain amount before it just becomes too hard. I shouldn't have to do that. I'm, I'm entitled to not have to work that hard. That's bullshit. You're not entitled to anything because what you want is going to take to do things that nobody else is doing. I know it. I have probably self-sabotaged myself in my career the whole time from all the same things. Not because I'm afraid of the work. Um, I can just have some other little hangups about, you know, what, who am I? What am I trying to be? What am I trying to be somebody I'm not? Those types of things. It's called the imposter syndrome, right? The closer you get to something or the more people start telling you that, man, you're just awesome. I personally shrink inside. Um, I don't know why. Working on it. But I wanted to read that to everybody. Um, good book. Pick it up. It really looks awesome sitting over here over my shoulder when I'm sitting here. But a lot of people have asked me, what the heck is on your shelf? Well, this is the book that I pick up every day and read at least one to two passages. Uh, real simple. You see it's big font. Really easy to read. Um, gives me things to think about. Gives me things to talk about whether they be with my friends and colleagues or in my coaching. Um, I look at examples and I start to see patterns and people do something. Maybe they're self-sabotaging. Maybe it's because they're afraid of the work. How much work is it going to be? How hard am I going to have to grind? How, what am I going to have to give up to get it? Well, the question is, is how bad do you want it? Because if you don't want whatever you're grinding for, you're certainly not going to put in the work to do it. So you have to ask yourself, the Simon Sinek, ask yourself why. Thanks. Thought I'd share it with you. See you.